Hi, I'm Vivian Davidson Hewitt. Welcome to our home. My late husband John and I uh, have lived here since 1965. We plan this house exclusively for art and for books. I'm a librarian by profession and he was a medical science writer. And what you're looking at now is our second art collection, the first and major one having been purchased some years ago by the Bank of America and has traveled throughout the United States, North, East, South, and West, and will eventually find its permanent home at the Harvey B. Gantt uh, Cultural Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. My husband and I were not in the art business of promoting art. It happened quite accidentally. Al Hollingsworth, one of the artists in the Hewitt Collection, happened to be here for a social gathering of some kind. I didn't know him, but he was a guest of one of the people. And he looked around this room and he decided that, he said, Mrs. Hewitt, this would be a good place for me to have an art show, show my art. And I said, this is our home. We live here, this is not a gallery. Al had a rejoinder, an answer for everything that I said. We gave Al Hollingsworth a show on a Sunday afternoon in May. We took down all of our paintings and hung all of his. He later told me that he sold as many works of art in one Sunday afternoon than he would sell in a gallery in a year. Al Hollingsworth showed us that our home could be a venue for them. We did shows subsequently over the years for Hale Woodruff, for Dr. Eugene Grigsby, and for Ernest Critchlow. We wanted to keep the collection together to sell it to a nonprofit organization or to a small museum that would keep it together and use it as an educational tool for young people and to inspire other people to collect if they wish. And that's why we put, put it on the market for sale. And fortunately for us, everything just seemed to happen at the right time. It was serendipity. The Bank of America was looking for an American collection for the opening of their gallery at the Arts and Crafts Museum of the Mint Museum in Uptown Charlotte. And it all just went together very well. And we're, we're so, so pleased. We're, we're just, just thrilled. It was, uh, the, it happened at the right time and the, and the right place. The bank, from the very, very beginning, bought this as a proposed gift to the African American Cultural Center in Charlotte. At the Hewitt's home, it was um, a, a very warm and um, comfortable atmosphere. When you entered their home, you would enter a, a, a kind of a double room with a double height that was um, a wonderful place to exhibit art. And all their hallways and uh, stairwells and so forth were covered with paintings. In general, there was so much art, it could not be classified as background. But certainly people were, um, many people were uh, more interested in talking to each other than uh, they were in the art. But the um, art was very um, powerful. And so I, I think that uh, people would absorb 
these wonderful paintings and drawings and, and etchings um, as um, uh, they were moving around the, the Hewitts' home. I don't think the Hewitts would be considered typical collectors because they carried their collecting on over a period of probably close to 50 years. Vivian may not be saying so right now, but I think she's still collecting. I'm Eugene Grigsby, J. Eugene Grigsby, Jr. My cousin Eugene Grigsby got started as an artist as a young man, as a very young man. Early on, to be able to travel or to do some things, he, he incorporated himself and he sold uh, shares of himself for $10 each to family and friends so that he could raise money. Let me correct that. Uh, I went to Morehouse. I had struck up a conversation and with a correspondence with a girl in Atlanta. So I went to visit her and she took me to an exhibit where I met Hale Woodruff, who was the teacher. Woodruff said, you can take art here at Morehouse. I was 16 years old, so I worked with Woodruff for three years there. But Woodruff used to tell all kinds of stories, and one of which was about an artist who had incorporated himself and sold shares. I wanted to go to art school, but, but it was during depression. So I incorporated myself to sell, to sell shares. And I had $125. I went to New York and got a room at the YMCA Annex. And the first night I set my bags down and I was yapping about going to art school. And the clerk said, there's an exhibit over at the main Y. And I went to I went over to look at this exhibit. As I walked around, there was one other person there. I got nerve enough to introduce myself. I'm Eugene Grigsby from Charlotte. He said, I'm Jacob Lawrence from New York. He said, there are some other artists here from Charlotte. You want to meet them? Charles Austin and Roman Beard. So he took me up to 141st Street. Jake Lawrence, as I said, he was the first the first person, the first artist that I met in New York. And when Eugene was studying summers on his doctorate, he introduced my husband and me to Hale, to Spinky, as we got to know him, Charles Austin. I met Romare Bearden through my cousin, Dr. Eugene Grigsby, because we would go, when Eugene would come in town from Phoenix, we would go to the, to the house and studio on Canal Street. And then I became very friendly with his wife, Nanette, who had been a former model, and it, who, who at the time was running the Nanette Bearden Contemporary Dance uh, School uh, group. I have a poster sign that Bromare Bearden designed for uh, Nanette's Contemporary Dance Group, and it is signed by both Bromare Bearden and by Nanette Bearden. Jamming at the Savoy by Bearden is one of my all-time favorites, and I gave that, I believe, to my husband for a birthday present. I think African American art is something very personal for everyone. Everyone sees it and uh, does it in a different way. African American art is presented in an abstract form. Sometimes it's presented in a figurative form. So everyone does their own thing. I started painting as a social commentary painter and uh, my colors were very gray, very sad and very uh, somber, but with my traveling, especially to places that are close to the equator, my palette changed and everything went up. And I felt that I could continue doing social commentary without having to do the very dark, gray, somber kind of pictures.
Vivian and John purchased a painting of mine, Harvest of Shame, and I was very distraught. I didn't have enough time to make a record of it, and I thought, oh, I'll never see it again. And then at one of my openings, this lovely little lady came up and said, are you Ann Tanksley? And I said, yes. And she said, I have your painting, Harvest of Shame. And it was like finding a child. And, and her husband was kind enough to make slides so that I did have a record of it. And, and that was the beginning of our relationship. And it just grew and grew and grew. The Hewitt Collection has really been very educational. The importance of the collection touring is that it reaches a broader audience. I, I think the interest in collecting African-American art is growing. Um, I think young people are becoming involved and very interested in collecting and knowing more. Collectors are helping artists in many ways and, and I always say that it helps me continue and pay for my habit. And art is my habit. And so I can frame, and I can travel, and, and I can do many things as a result of people supporting me. The Hewitt Collection is, in my estimation, one of the most important current collections of African American art. And the importance for me is that the Hewitts have been collecting for almost 50 years. So they have seen a tremendous body of works by African Americans. She herself is a librarian and he a physician, and they traveled around the world, particularly Africa and the Caribbean. So they have an incredible eye in terms of selecting works of African-American artists, and they're also very good with selecting works by up-and-coming artists. What I do find most uncomfortable is that children going into our museums, particularly African-American children, and there are no imagery of African-American people in our mainstream museums. There are imagery of African people, of Asian people, of Native American people, of Euro-American people, but very few imagery of African-American people, which is a very distinctive culture of people. So the Hewitts have been a beacon for introducing the artists to the communities, introducing the artists to the collectors, helping the collectors to understand that they have to continue to collect, to continue to bring the new artists and therefore the new voices of art expression into the mainstream community. It's given the artist in the collection the opportunity to have been seen and viewed across this country, north and south, by hundreds of thousands of people in a variety of communities. I've always said that there are two things that parents, two legacies that they can leave to their children, and they, in effect, these were our children. You give them wings and you give them roots, and the ba bank has given them wings because it's been to 20, about 25 venues, and it will have roots in North Carolina where my roots are. And I think it's just exactly right.